Okay, what we're going to take a look at now is returning a user profile that includes things like their display name, their username, their main image, and also the collection of photos for that particular user. And what we'll do inside our Solution Explorer, we'll go back to our application folder. And where we've got our profiles, what we'll do is we'll create a new handler that's going to return a profile for a user. So we're going to call this Details inside the Profiles folder. And what we'll do is create a handler for this. But what we also want to do is go back to our profile class. And as well as returning this information, what we'll also do is we'll return an eye collection of photo and call it photos for each user profile that we return. So we'll bring in system collections generic to make use of the eye collection here. And we'll also need to bring in photo from our domain. So we'll go back to our handler, the details handler, and this is going to be a query. So we'll call it public class query. Anything that we're doing that doesn't update the database, of course, is going to be a query. And we'll say I request and we'll return a result of type profile. And let's bring in what we need. So we need the using mediator. We're going to need our using application core and just hover over profile and make sure it's coming from application profiles profile. Other parts of our application, such as AutoMapper, also use a profile class inside their namespace. So do be careful when we're using this particular class. And what we need is the username in here. So we'll say public string username. Other logged in users are going to be able to get other users' profiles and we'll add a root parameter onto our endpoint so that we can get the username that we're interested in returning here. And then we can add our handler. So we'll say public class handler, which is an I request handler. And we'll pass in our query and the results of type profile. And then we can go ahead and implement our interface. So we need two things inside our constructor here that we're going to inject. And of course, we need to access to our database. So we'll say data context and context. But what we're also going to do is we're going to need to be able to map our user object to a profile object. So what we'll also do is bring in iMapper to make this incredibly easy for us. So we'll say iMapper and mapper, and then we'll just bring in persistence and we'll bring in automapper so that we can make use of iMapper and then we'll just initialize these fields from parameter. And inside our handle method, we'll make it async. And then what we'll do is we'll say var user equals await and then context.users. And let's think about what we want to do here. Now we're going to need to include the user's photos. And we could do that by eager loading. But we also know that we want to return a profile. And we've used this earlier, but what we're going to use is project2 that we get from AutoMapper. And we're going to project2 the profile here. And let's bring in, or let's spell it correctly first of all. So it needs to be project2. And then we can bring in using AutoMapper queryable extensions. And then we can pass the configuration and say mapper and configuration provider. And then we can select the user we're interested in. And just for a change, we can use either first or default or single or default. Each username is going to be unique in our database. So either one is going to do the same thing. But just for a change, I'm just going to use single or default async here. And we'll bring in Microsoft Entity Framework Core. And then we'll say x goes to username. That's equal to the request dot username. And then we can return the results of type profile. And we'll say dot success. And then we can return the user, which is going to be of type profile. If we hover over the user, then we can see that this is a type of profile. What we should do actually, of course, because this may be null if we do not have a user that matches this username. And we're going to say if user equals null, then we're going to return. No. 
And what we'll also need to do is create a controller that's going to handle returning user profiles. So what we'll do, we'll head up to our API inside the controllers folder. We'll create a new class and we'll call it profiles controller. And inside here, we're going to derive from our base API controller. And what we're going to have is an HTTP GET that's going to take a root parameter of the user's username. And we'll say public async task. And we're going to return an I action result. And we'll say get profile as the name of this method. And we'll pass in our username as a parameter here. And let's just bring in what we need. So we need Microsoft ASP.NET Core MVC. And we'll also need to bring in system threading tasks. And then we can go ahead and say that we want to return and say handle result and we'll say await mediator dot send and we need our new details and once again we need to be careful about what we're importing especially if we're using simple names such as things like details we need to make sure we get this from our application profiles namespace and then we can specify that we want the query and we can pass in the username property as the username that we're getting from our parameters. Now, if we try and do this now, we're going to fail because if we take a look at our mapping profiles, we do not have anything that goes from an app user to a profile. We've got our activity attendee, but what we're doing inside our details method here is we're projecting to a profile from a user object. So what we'll do is we'll take a look at our mapping configuration next and test our new functionality.